Okay, so hi, uh, Kevin Proto here with Local Supporting Locals for another segment of the heart, Heartbeat of the Okanagan. And so again, it's our predicted elections 2018. And this is a forum uh, for the councillors and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, meritorials. And it's at the Senior Drop-In Centre. And uh, in case you forget, we are the ones that published our Local Supporting Local Calendar. And as well, yours truly, uh, Kevin Proto here, is running for City Council. And my goal is I want to be your watchdog. Okay, so I'm not a politician, so I, I want to be your watchdog, I want to sniff out, park if I have to, and then bike if need be. And so you got, you're pretty much predetermined on who you want to vote for, for the most part. You got your three or four candidates. So you got six boxes to check off. So in your six box, just check Kevin Proto, and I will be your watchdog. So there should be uh, a great candidate for him. It's uh, filling up. And I think uh, they're going to have to put out more chairs. So uh, enjoy the debate and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all uh, uh, events going on. And uh, yeah, we record everything in full. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elmi. Uh, I want to thank the Seniors Wellness Society and the Drop In Center for organizing this. And I can't believe the crowd. Did you hear there's free food or something? <laughs> because that's not true, it's not happening. Uh, but there will be plenty of free discussion. Uh, and it's an important subject, too. Uh, judging by the size of the crowd, I think the, the seniors' population is 90%. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm, I'm delighted to see so many of you here. Uh, you know that all the candidates got this interesting pamphlet uh, that I think you might have on your chair. And it's full of interesting facts about how many of us seniors there are. Uh, I'm a baby boomer. Uh, I'll be 74 next month, uh, which in Penticton makes me a kid. Really. <laughs> but uh, this is going to be a, an, interesting, uh, an interesting debate here. So let me quickly tell you how this works. Uh, the mayor candidates are on the stage, as you can see on either side of me, and the council candidates are in the semicircle on the floor. And because there are so many candidates, so many people to hear from, uh, we had to try to find a way to let everybody uh, get a chance to shine, but still keep it in a reasonable time frame. So we're dividing the forum into two main parts. The first part, uh, we're going to allow each candidate, mayors and councillors, to speak for two minutes to introduce themselves and to talk, we hope, about uh, their feelings and their ideas about seniors' issues, what could or should be done uh, to uh, accommodate seniors, this growing segment of our population. Uh, we're going to, as I said, it's a two minute, each one gets two minutes. And Wendy Stewart down here is our timekeeper. And at the one minute and 30 mark, she's gonna hold up this 30 second card. And then 20 seconds later, she'll hold up that 10 second card. And that means you've got 10 seconds to wrap it up. And then, he rings the cowbell. So I know if you're like me, you definitely do not want to be here past 8 o'clock tonight. So everybody, please respect that two minutes. And uh, I'm sure you will. Two minutes can be an eternity in public speaking. Uh, the other thing about this is that the order of speakers is determined by a random draw. And Elmi Saltic did the draw with a bow on her head. She has absolutely no idea what, what name she was pulling out of the hat. So the candidates don't know the order of, of speaking. So there's, uh, it's completely random. And I just got the list. Only I know who's talking first and who's last. So that's part one. That's going to take a bit over an hour at best. And then. We'll take a short stretch, that's it. Don't even leave your seats. And then we'll move on to part two where we, you get to ask your questions in a limited way. Our organizers are going to select from the questions that you submit because we'll only have time, realistically speaking, for you know, maybe six or seven. But don't despair because after this forum, we've asked all the candidates to stick around. There'll be a social time. There'll be uh, coffee and tea. and apparently very big, very good homemade cookies available, but not free. It's $2. That, that window over there will open, 
and suddenly the smell of cookies and coffee will come wafting out. So you can approach the candidates and, and uh, speak to them one-on-one -on -one after this is over, munch on a cookie, have some coffee, and, and, uh, and carry on. But we're hoping to, to bring the formal part of the program to a close by about 3.30 or so. Something like that. OK. One other thing, because I've been stressing this a lot, because we want to keep this thing moving, please help us and help yourselves by not applauding after everybody speaks. OK? Don't do that. Even if you love this person, even if it's your son or daughter, hold the applause. Oh, wait, don't hold it. How about giving them all a huge round of applause now for taking part in the process, for coming out today? And at the end, another roaring round of applause. That should do it, OK? Uh, I don't need to say that we want to obviously keep it civil, so no shouting, jeering, tomato throwing. But I know this is a senior's audience, so they, I don't think you could throw this far. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm not, it's not a challenge, but I'm just, just saying, we try to keep the chairs back far enough that we feel safe. Okay. All right, so let's start with part one. Our first speaker will be Daryl Sanders and uh, you get two minutes. Daryl's not here. Great. Okay. So the second speaker taking Daryl's place is Campbell Watt. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Campbell Watt. I'd like to thank all of you for coming today and uh, giving us the opportunity to speak with you. I uh, have to admit that I don't yet have many personal experiences to look back on when discussing seniors' issues, uh, but I do have a mom, a dad, a stepmom, and a step-grandmother who all retired and living in Penticton. And I'm fully aware they're part of a rapidly growing number of seniors, not only to our community, but to our province. Uh, I believe it's expected by the year 2031 BC's population will be made up of a quarter uh, percentage of people are 65 and over. I also know that our community uh, built uh, as a large portion of seniors and clearly a great destination for it, uh, have some issues that, will make, uh, that we could be looking at and addressing to make our community more age-friendly moving forward. I know in two minutes we won't be able to cover many of these issues, but a couple I feel should be the, near the top of our priorities lists are uh, simply, I, I think that we need to recognize the importance of our outdoor spaces and our public buildings, uh, making sure that they're secure, safe, and accessible. And when I say accessible, I'm speaking uh, not just of uh, physically, but, but also from an affordability standpoint. Uh, I also think recreation, personally, is a key component for me. Um, I'll use the, the ball courts just outside here as an example. Uh, I fought for those, uh, and I have continued to fight for more of those types of opportunities, uh, as it's one of the wow, largest <laughs> growing sports. Uh, and, and I think it's very important that with those opportunities, it's not just about the recreation. People who are retiring now are retiring at a much healthier uh, ability than others in the past. And it does create not just that recreational activity for staying healthy, but socially as well. And, and I think there should be a difference between knowing you uh, are able to be a part of the group and social activity as, as, without losing your independence. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Joe. Well, I think that we would have laughed. Okay, our next speaker is David O'Brien. Hello, everyone. My name is David O'Brien. I'm the dark horse here. I'm the unknown. My name is O'Brien, and I'm running for a number of reasons. The reasons that I'm concerned are seniors is security. I've talked to many of you, and you need to have a safe place when you come downtown. And we have open use, and we have some problems. It's a very complex problem. 
I really believe we need to address this problem so that our grandchildren, our citizens, yourselves feel safe coming downtown. So that's number one. Number two is economy. I talked to a lot of seniors who are on fixed incomes. We're sometimes looking at how well do I eat compared to my electric, my, my water bill. We need to have this be an affordable place for our seniors. When we look at uh, economy, for our younger families, we need more jobs. We need our young people to stay in this community. We need our young people to want to stay here and engage with our seniors. I love hearing the word engagement. So we need a strong economy. When we have a strong economy, we have more of a tax base to afford the things that we want for this great city. Another item we have is transit. Some people remember me. I've been a businessman. I've been with, with, with uh, budgets. When we first came here, there was a recession on. And I came from Vancouver in 2011. And I had to take a job that was driving a taxi. Thank you. And I got to talk to many of you. And our transit system is a great system here. I talked to some people on the Transit Council. And we would love, and I'm going to promote, that we have a 15 minute bus free late to late. We have that almost now. But it would make a big difference if you know you're going to catch your bus in 50 minutes. Please remember my name. I'd love to have your vote. It's Dave O'Brien. Thank you for your time. The, uh, I forgot to mention a couple of us. If you've never been here before, there is an emergency exit at the very back of the hall, here and here, but don't try to use them. Because, <laughs> you know, we're, we're here for the donation. Toilets are over there. No, you can do this again. Absolutely have to. Okay, let's uh, move on. Our next speaker is Max Picton. Not here. If it wasn't for you guys, I would never know who's here. Well, I know. I know Lynn Kelsey is here. Because she just told me. Okay, Duffy Baker. Hello. Uh, thank you all for coming. I, uh, I'm running for council because I believe in equality in all ages, not just seniors or the youth or the middle age, but, but of everyone and, and trying to create a community that actually involves uh, every demographic. So I, uh, I believe part of the reason why I, I care so much about uh, everyone is I, I was partly raised in a senior center by my grandparents, so so I know the the impact that the seniors actually have in the community and what they can you know bring to the community. I I feel that we all can learn a lot from the way uh, everyone lives, especially in the seniors community. You, you create a better friendship base with each other. You you have quite a, a gathering of support around yourselves. Uh, and it's something that can be valued throughout the community. I personally really respect that. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to hear the problems that are coming from the, the community in, this, in the seniors, where 29% where of all British Columbia will be um, in Penticton as the retiree community. And I feel that, uh, you know, with the fixed incomes and the, you know, lack of affordable housing, there's something that we can really, you know, put forth and, and really get to uh, nail down. And I, I'm a big advocate for affordable housing. I am a builder and I understand, you know, the importance of it. So that's something I definitely want to be a part of and, and help support the seniors as well with affordable housing. Thank you. Next speaker is Connie Selmark. Good afternoon. I was told I talked too quietly, so I'm going to project this afternoon. I ran as your candidate in the Green Party, and I think most of you know who I am, and if you don't, please approach me afterwards with my qualifications, but I want a chance finally to talk about a platform. <laughs> When we look at uh, our, our municipal government, 
It is not a business. It's a social structure. And the mandate is different than business. Our job is to make sure that services and amenities are provided for the local citizenry. And if you have nothing but business in council, that's what you get, unbridled development. What I would like to see in our city is we need to be having the innovative solutions towards affordable housing, such as post-housing, -house mixed use. We need to have our transit that's more frequent, quicker stops, extended routes. The other thing I would like to see is dedicated trails and bike paths. You can't go down the sidewalk because the cyclists and skateboarders are there, you've got your mobility scooters because people are terrified of the traffic. When I moved here, I was stunned. And Tipton has the most vibrant, energetic seniors I've ever seen. I took Saskatchewan. At 55, we just pull up carts and wait. You guys are running marathons. We have a lot of things that we can do with and I, here. I think that what we need to see is that what we're doing at City Hall needs to reflect our tax base and who our tax base is. We have fixed incomes to deal with, but the thing is, we're not that limited with money. We were looking at a light canopy over Main Street for Pete's sake. It's how we spend our money, what's our priority. So please come talk to me afterwards. I'd love to talk to you about my ideas for making it a more affordable place and a place that you truly are going to love living here forever. Next to the microphone, Jesse Martin. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming on today, uh, taking the time out of your day to come and hear what we have to say, uh, be part of the democratic process. Um, my dad recently turned 65, and on his birthday, I asked him, I'm like, what do you look forward to most about being a senior citizen now that you're, now that you're there? And he said that he would only have to pay $5 for his fishing license. So I have to say he wasn't a great source of, of help for, for coming up with the platform. But um, when it comes to seniors' issues, I think it, it's similar to, to everybody. And the United Nations just, um, they just announced recently that there's an epidemic around the world, and that epidemic is loneliness. And a lot of it is caused by the digital divide that's happening right now. Uh, you may have noticed uh, groups of teenagers with vac vacant zombie stares in their eyes uh, huddled around these things. Um, but I, I have a feeling that, that a few of us also have one of these. Put up your hand if you have a, a cell phone here. Something you can touch. This, this is a tool, and it's not about creating a divide. It's about being able to access things with it. We have the information right now uh, at the city through mapping where you can use this to identify problems that you find in the city. You can mark something and say, hey, there's a pothole in the ground, it needs to be fixed, and if you take a picture with your phone and waypoint it, it goes right to City Hall. It could, if we had the app. Right now we have it all mapped in there. The technology is available. You could use this to identify any problem you have in the community, and it would help the city um, be able to prioritize where the issues are. So if I'm, if I'm in, if I'm elected, I will be back here helping to use that app, helping to teach anyone who's interested in joining the digital age with everybody else. Thank you for your attention. I heard the cowbell. <laughs> it's a first. Okay, next up, Christopher Miller. Probably working. Yeah. 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 Okay, Christopher Evison. Frank Revere. Rieger. Rieger. Good afternoon. Um, I guess I can say uh, at a meeting I was at yesterday, I think I contributed to almost losing my voice, so I hope it doesn't crackle too much on you today. Uh, pleased to be here. I've been a resident of Penticton for 30 years. Uh, worked uh, for the school district, and uh, I guess my expertise and profession was uh, in business and uh, accounting with local government. Um, as a senior myself, uh, uh, parent and grandparent, 
Um, I think uh, a way to look at a seniors community is, is what I'd like to talk about. And with Penticton having such a large seniors community, uh, in gathering material for this, uh, there's there's a, a, a an organization really in, endorsed by uh, as, as as wide as the World Health Organization, and uh, particularly in Canada, uh, it's it's supported, but it's it's called uh, uh, Age Friendly Cities, and I uh, uh, wanted to just speak a little bit about that that we can talk about seniors' needs in in a individual or just the components of looking at it, but you can also look at, at it in a very cohesive way. And this organization that's developed this uh, age-friendly city, it, it's endorsed by the province of BC. There's funding available through the Uni Union of BC Municipalities. And basically it provides uh, a, 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 a development planning around eight components that uh, it would be expected that seniors would, would go. So respect and social uh, inclusion and in housing, civic engagement, social participation, community support and health services, uh, housing, transportation, outdoor spaces and buildings, and communication and information. And it's a coordinated program. Uh, we could apply for grants to the community. Thank you very much. That's what you get for changing the pronunciation on your name. <laughs> okay, uh, our next speaker will be Katie Robinson. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Katie Robinson, and I'm asking for your vote on October the 20th. I've had the uh, privilege of representing you on past councils for over 10 years and was also a working member of one of the first seniors advisory committees in this town. That was the one that made this building a reality, by the way. So since 1990, I've been lobbying for a strategic plan for the, to meet the needs of our seniors. I believe that we're missing the boat in regard to not paying more attention to seniors. This is the fastest growing segment of the world's population, and yet governments at all levels continue to ignore retirees at their peril. I would start actively marketing Penticton as a retirement destination, while focusing on long-term health care as an industry, and I've been doing that for a long time. Our great climate and our small town charm is already uh, <coughs> already uh, gathering seniors to our area. And I think we can do a lot better to enhance the quality of lifestyle that we have here that we all wish to enjoy during our retirement. Marketing Penticton as a retirement destination would certainly benefit our local economy from both increased uh, property tax revenues to supporting local services and healthcare industries, which by the way would also provide better paying jobs for our younger residents with doctors, nurses, technicians, entrepreneurs all moving here to provide the needed services for our seniors. This is a win-win situation for everyone. So if we pay more attention to our seniors, the rest of the population will take care of themselves. What market are we appealing to and which market is growing? It's the seniors market. Thank you for your time. I look forward to discussing this more at length over coffee. John Archer, will you take the microphone, please? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for inviting the candidates here today. I, too, am a senior, a younger senior, 68. They just said my birthday the other week. So I am gradually becoming more involved in uh, the senior community. I moved here uh, specifically in 1997 to retire. Although I was working at the time, I changed careers and built up another successful business and chose to retire in Penticton for a variety of reasons, all of which have been met and I've been delighted with. So um, I had, uh, my parents lived to the ages of 98 and 101. So uh, I think I have a few uh, good genes in me and I have a long way to go. But I am acutely aware of the care uh, that my parents required. 
that care uh, included issues regarding medical care, eye care, mobility, and um, they're also becoming aware of their needs in general for socialization and transportation, which was readily available for them in Mississauga where they were retired. I think that uh, as a council member, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from senior representatives of the community on a consistent basis in order to ensure that the needs that you feel are necessary and important and prioritized are met with by council and welcomed by council in order to ensure further uh, implement implementation of those needs and support for the senior community in general. So, I hope you vote uh, for the uh, candidate of your choice. I may be one of them, and I hope to hear from anyone at any time. I'm on Facebook. I hope some of you have Facebook at John Archer. Thank you very much. Marie Pryor, are you here? It's your turn. Yeah, not counting yet. So, my name's Marie Pryor. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to see all of you turning out for this good event. So, I am a senior. Moved here in Penticton, 1999, 20 years in the community, serving in as a counselor and serving in numerous organizations uh, to help all strata of the community. So we've heard about the stats about the aging population here. We know that it is increasing. And we know that we need to put things in place. I'm a very basic person, and so what I believe is a couple of things here. We need to have a few systems in place so that the seniors can enjoy this facility, which is great at providing uh, services, teaching tools, they have uh, lots of um, interesting things here. Um, but I'd like to talk about the transportation a little bit. We need possibly smaller vans and buses, and we need better shopping facilities for seniors. We need better crosswalks facilities connecting Wilson Street and Yorkton right here. <clears throat> and many seniors do not have time to cross in the time frames allowed at traffic lights, and can be stressed trying to reach the other side of the road safely. There's an ongoing problem clearing snow from sidewalks, which is coming. Snow is coming. So that scooters can travel safely up and down our curbs. So we know that the 78% of our population will be that part, at that part in 2046 <coughs> or more. So um, we should have regular town hall meetings. We should have teaching seminars on safeguarding seniors from Ford and senior forums to identify current needs. Information on home care, polypharmacy, prescription drugs, which can be over the top given to families, and um, families that could have children with supervision to adopt a grandma or granddad, pet for the day, all sorts of other things. Please speak to me afterwards. Judy Santos, it's your turn. to meet with you today. Having lived in the community for over 30 years, I absolutely believe that Penticton is a place to stay forever. With three adult children and now the grandmother of five, I have the time and energy to enhancing the quality and safety of everyone's life in our community. As an experienced counselor, I have represented the city to several organizations and been a, a member of many committees from arts and culture, heritage, museum, affordable housing, downtown safety strategy, parks and recreation, children's issues, the official community plan review, and the Seniors Wellness Society. I have advocated and strategized for this very building with Mr. Art Gladish many years ago. 
I'm the Vice Chairman of the Okanagan Simulcoming Regional Hospital Board and was part of the lobby for the expansion and upgrade of Penticton Regional Hospital. I support a new patient care proposal to both the Interior Health and the Ministry of Health addressing the need for more doctors. I support the city's applications for provincial and federal grant applications for programs for seniors. I support partnerships between the school district and young students for reading and listening to children. I will advocate to include seniors' needs with our conversations with BC Housing. I encourage everyone to vote on October 20th and hope you will consider choosing a balanced city council. There is a need for continuity within governing bodies, but also room for new people, bringing diversity of experience and ideas. Thank you. At this time, we'll call on Julius Moonfield. Hello, my name is Julius Bloomfield and I'm respectfully asking for your vote on October the 20th, or early, should you choose. And I have lived in this area for 30 years now, and in those past 30 years I've seen a lot of changes. And I'm sure that there's going to be a lot more changes in the next 30 years. And so how does the city deal with the changes that are coming? And uh, and how do we bring about those changes to the best possible effect? Well, I think it has to do with respect. Uh, the city needs to respect the needs of the people of the city. The city needs to respect the environment that surrounds the city. And the city needs to respect the businesses and the public service institutions that are within the city. We need to provide the ability for people to live here in a healthy and safe manner. We need to respect the environment as far as the quality of the air and the quality of the water. And we need to respect the business community so that they can thrive and provide the services that we all need. And so with respect in mind, I think the city needs to make thoughtful, balanced decisions to help community, the city, grow into the place that we all want it to be. We all have the same ultimate goal, and that is to create a city that is a beautiful, healthy, and safe city to live in. Thank you. I now call on Doug Maxwell. Hi, my name is Doug Maxwell, and I remember the 60s. <laughs> I don't remember Woodstock, though. Um, I lived in downtown Penticton for over 23 years, and uh, I'm a retired, successful small businessman that uh, had a business here in town for uh, almost 20 years. And uh, if I'm voted into council, I will, I will have one vote, and I will vote for uh, the same issues that I reiterated uh, at the other debate, because I think seniors' issues are the same as everybody else's issues. Uh, we all have children, grandchildren, and, and it's important we know the whole package. Uh, a growth that is steady, slow, and sensible. I want Penticton to be livable. Uh, downtown gasification, uh, over development up in the hills. And I want to, to deal with developers who follow the bylaws and the OCP directives. Hopefully we'll have a new OCP out uh, soon. I was at the meeting last night and it's getting closer. Timely and organized replacement of underground overhead and service assets. Our assets uh, are very important and we have to make sure they get maintained and renewed. Uh, bylaw enforcement, it's a big one for me, including our good neighbor bylaws. Um, also, also getting the RDOS involved in a lot of uh, um, capital projects. I think that somebody's dropped the ball over the years on this because there was talk years ago about uh, about uh, two-tier pricing system, which I don't think would work. But I think that those bigger projects should be owned 
uh, by the greater community and share it. Uh, and uh, selling Penticton to new industrial business, but without giving away the farm. Uh, also spending money on solutions to homelessness and not just moving the problem up and down the creek. If you share my direction, I'd appreciate your vote on October 20th. Thank you. And let's turn now to Karen Brownlee. Hi there, I'm Karen Brownlee. Um, when my family and I first moved to Penticton 30 years ago, um, my first job was a waitress at the Stardust restaurant, where I came into contact with the seniors who had me laughing. You guys are just hilarious and fantastic bunch of people. As I moved into lawn care a few years after that, seniors became the biggest ratio of my, of my lawn care for them, uh, for mowing their lawns and fertilizing and pruning their trees. And again, um, for 25 years now, we've, I've not only made great friends with seniors, but they're still my clients to this day. If you vote me into uh, city council for this term, I will be your voice in City Hall to help you get to where you're going. You are a vibrant bunch of people, and as I enter into seniorness myself, um, I know what it's like to have the um, capabilities, the trails, the healthy life, and thankfully Penticton at this date is one of the healthiest cities across Canada, uh, due to our climate, due to our, our environment, our healthy air, um, so I would really love that you would vote me in so that you and I together can work to help with the changes we all need here in the city. Thank you. And now, if Jake Kimberly could take the microphone. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. It's really nice to be here and you and listen to your concerns. But anyway, uh, I have served as four years as a councillor and nine mayors as the city for nine mayors, nine years as a mayor for the city of Penticton. And uh, now I'm wondering why I'm back into it. Well, I will explain that to you. But uh, the other night I was I was uh, suggested as being a retread for council. Well, according to my doctor, this retread's good for another four years. So anyway, let me suggest. Why am I here? Because of the Skaha Lake issue, the Skaha Park issue. I became directly involved with that simply because I helped to, to develop that site. I became involved because that park was paid for by your tax dollars. It is your park, it is your recreation area, it is your grass, it is your trees that should never be given away to commercialization, period. Secondary to this, every time I ran for election, by the way, this is my 10th campaign, Every time I've run for election, I've heard the complaints that we don't have enough youth here. We don't have enough jobs here. All we are is seniors. All we have here is seniors. And what's missing in that criticism through every campaign I've been on is the amount of jobs that you seniors create in this community. It is huge. Nurses, service cares, attendees, everything you can think of is associated with your services that you require for living here. You are dedicated people to the community. You deserve to have those services. You deserve to have a good life. You deserve to have protection because today's society is changing dramatically where we see people on the streets and drugs on the streets. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to all of us, but especially seniors because you're more vulnerable. Thank you. I call now on Isaac Gilbert. Thank you, Bob, and everyone for being here today. My name is Isaac Gilbert, and I'm running for council because I want to be part, more a part of this community. When I moved into this town, I jumped right in, becoming a Toastmaster, starting an improv troupe, and just helping out friends and everyone in the community. And that is in our vision statement as the city of Penticton, is to be focused on community and economic development and sustainability. And we need to be accountable for that. And I'm going to be running on principles to hold councillors, 
city staff, and the community accountable to being in the community. You're part of this community. And as Jesse said, I think there is a divide between the youth and the seniors here. And something that I don't like, something that I want to see not to happen. Because you bring a lot of skills, a lot of experience, a lot of history that I love hearing about. I miss sitting down with my grandfather and hearing about all his woodshop work and all the stories he had. Um, and I want to support programs in the city that will build that relationship back up. Uh, we're going to have a maker space here in the city of Penticton at the Okanagan School of the Arts. And I look forward to that opportunity to be there and hopefully have some of you there transferring your skills of carpentry and making things over to the youth in this city. There's another program that's going to be bringing bicycles back to seniors who can't ride called Cycling Without Age. I'm a biker and I want to make sure that the city is safe for cyclists and for everyone in this town to be able to get around. And I want to see the city staff take in uh, to design the city with people with physical barriers and make it accessible for everyone. I'd like to see the Rick Hansen Society come in and train counselors and staff about how to deal with physical barriers so that we are well-informed counselors and we know how to deal with the problems in the city with people who have physical barriers. And I'm here to listen to you. And regardless of what happens on October 20th, I will be part of this community and very much involved, and I hope to see you in it. Thank you. Daryl Clark. My name is Daryl Clark, and I just retired from my job recently, so a lot of the things that I want now are different than what they were before. But the one thing that we all want is we all want safer streets, and we all want to have a safer community. I want it for my family. I know you want it for yours, not only for yourself, but for your grandkids. That's one of the things we have to do, and we have to make our parks safer for people. We need to be able to walk at Scott Park at 10 o'clock at night and not worry about it, and also know that it's going to be there next year and the year after. In order to do this, we need, to, we need a better economy in this town to hold young people here. We need a better a service delivery system for the seniors. Right now on the transportation committee that I'm on, we're looking at different, different transportation modes for, for seniors. We're looking, at, we're looking at bike paths. We're looking at a lot of different things. And right now, with the OCP coming up, we have a golden opportunity to set things right in this town, not only for seniors, because we need to make it safe and progressive for seniors. You're getting healthier, we're all living longer, and we need to make it right for young people too, that it's an inclusive for all of us, because we all want our grandkids to be able to come here and have a good time too. It's a city that has the opportunity at this time to go forward with the new Parks Master Plan, with the new OCP, and with the new inclusion of the people in the city. It seems the city is learning slowly to include people and give people the opportunity. And in this room, I see so much opportunity with people that have been there and done that and have a lot of experience to give to the community and should be included <coughs> in the future of the city with what they've seen through their lives and what, where we need to go. Penticton is a beautiful place for us all to live, and we can all work together to make a much better Penticton for all of us. <coughs> Thank you very much. From now on, you have to penalize people that change the mic. <laughs> Take off 10 or 20 seconds. I want to hear that cowbell. <coughs> okay, Glenn Clark. It's your turn. Hello, everybody, and thanks for coming out. This, this is awesome. Um, I moved to town 27 years ago, fresh out of university. I had long brown hair, I was single, met my wife. Where does the time go? Thank God, look at me. I'm almost there. And, and I've got 170 feet of, of sidewalk to do on my corner lots. And every time it snows, it reminds me how close this retirement age thing is coming up. So I am very interested on um, the definitely on the issues that are, I'm going to be facing pretty quick. I've been in a public service job at the art gallery. It doesn't come with a, a pension. So like many of you, I'm sure, you're stuck on a rich pension that has been, I don't know, seem to be stuck forever and is not keeping up with the pace of the economy. So as a senior, my plan to get through this is to just work until I die. I mean, it's, it's, it's not much of a plan, but it's all I got. Um, but the issues, I know you guys can tell me the issues, but I know some of the issues because I'm, I live here and there's the big one is transportation. All of our major medical services are in Kelowna. And we've got a bus that goes there on Monday 
And that's it. And then there's, 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 my wife takes the bus every month to go visit my mom. And, and she says that at the end of the day, it's, it's a dog fight to get on the bus because they don't really monitor who comes and goes. So I mean, that's, that's an example. We've got to really pick up our pace and get transportation up and down this valley because we, I'm going to have to get rid of my car pretty quick. And that's just the reality of it, right? Um, senior homes. I mean, how do you, how do you live off sixteen hundred dollars a, a month, right? And then I know that these senior homes are quite often understaffed. My wife's in a choir. They go to a senior home the same, but there's nobody coming out because there's no staff to bring them and support that. So I mean, we gotta look at some of these issues as well. There's a lot of issues, and uh, I'll be working hard for all of you. So thank you very much for coming out. I call now on Kevin Proto. Hi there, so I'm Kevin Proto and I'm running for City Council and thank you everyone for coming. I come from a different stance. Uh, I always like to say I'm not a politician. You break down the word, po by tish So I'm here to be your watchdog. And if anybody's been paying attention to me, I was uh, filming out of my own uh, YouTube channel. I do my own alternative media. And so I've been a watchdog for a number of years, and I filmed the whole Skaw Park uh, fiasco, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm running as well, is I saw how a local government thought it was okay to, to go around their own bylaws. And I think that uh, my platform says it's time to drain City Hall, because when you think that's okay, if they go around once, they'll do it again. So um, I will be your vigilant watchdog in City Hall, and I do, I do bark and I do bite. So I want to be that voice for you. And one of my biggest concerns when it comes to health and safety, if I'm on the other hand, I don't like a lot of the technology that's coming into our town. I've been looking at all the uh, senior buildings, a lot of apartment buildings, and I'm seeing cell towers after cell towers after cell towers. I have, uh, the reason why, I'm, the major reason why I'm running is because now we got the, this new internet of things, 5G. And if you look at the positives, if you look at one of their uh, commercials, it looks like the best thing. The problem is, is what they need to do is install micro cell towers on every second to 10th house. So we're talking every 800 feet. I kind of got a problem with that. Uh, so yeah, so I got in a public forum on October 10th. So pick up one of the flyers, please, and feel free to ask me any questions. But I do have solutions. I've been publishing the Real Living with Real Food calendars for five years now. And what I think we need to do is go back to a natural, organic way of life, the way it used to be. We never called it back to organic when I was a kid. It was just real food. Thank you. So we're down to two council candidates who have not spoken yet. And they must be really wondering, is it going to be Lynn Kelsey or Joe Frockwich who speaks next? I know the answer. And it's you, Lynn Kelsey. Come on down. Well, thank you very much, Bob, and thank you all so much for being here. I was really pumped. I was going around the room earlier to setting up the chairs. I am so excited to see all of you here. I got a chance to meet a few of you. I'm running for council. I have been at every city council meeting for the last four years, but two. And I'm pretty sure that the majority of these people can't say that. Um, last night was the last city council before the election, and Mr. Mr. Maxwell, <laughs> Mr. O'Brien, and Mr. Bloomfield were the only people there other than myself. So that tells you who was really interested. Um, I can remember when I turned 55 and I got to go to Zellers for Senior's Day without having to take my mom. That was exciting. And then the other, the other perks that you get. But there's so much more. And it's been mentioned by a number of people about the, the way seniors are different now. They're much more active. They're much more engaged. You go to any volunteer opportunity we have in this town, and believe me, we have a lot. And you'll find the seniors are really engaged in making things happen in this town. My mom is here with me tonight, today, and I'm really happy to say that. Mom lives in the Concord. She has some support, but a lot of, this, a lot of the facilities don't have the support and the proper staff. I taught at Squash Shaw, and I taught a lot of the care aids. That was what I taught. 
And I told them I was going to be a grumpy old woman, and when they looked after me, they had to do it right. And so they've been taught well. <laughs> but there's not enough people to care for the seniors that are not aging as well as this group is here. You guys are awesome. And I really am so glad you're a part of this. Get out and vote. You also have an opportunity for advanced polls right here at the Senior Center on the 18th as well. So make sure you get out and vote. And I ask for your vote. Go ahead, ring the bell. Mom here. There you go. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, Joe Frockwich, you're next. And can we make arrangements to get the mic to Joe? Oh, you're gonna, oh, you got to hand up? Okay. <laughs> Are we on? Oh, we're not off. Hi, my name is Joe Brockwich. Um, I'm here hoping that uh, a lot of these people will look at me for counsel this year. But, you know, what really gets me is I look out into the audience. Uh, use people, and I see so much knowledge. It's unreal. That's where my heart really lies uh, with our elders here, plain and simple. I opened up a small mobility place here in town, and um, people come in to me that are on pensions, and what happens is they get, they, they fall between the cracks uh, of the government and stuff like that. And I look and I go, wow, what can I do? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I do when you're on these fixed incomes is I turn around and I make sure I'm there to help them. If they can't afford it, I'll give it to them. Plain and simple. That's the way it is. We need to respect our elders. It's used people that brought people into this world like myself. And believe me, I respect everything an elder's got to say. If I'm not too sure on what I'm looking at, I'll go to an elder and ask them. They lived this life already. They've got the knowledge. And believe me, I really want to hear from you. Uh, anybody that would like to talk to me later, I, I would love to hear from you. So. But um, it's going on now that I, I did this, and I want to see a safer Penticton. And I know a lot of you in here want to see it too. I talk to a lot of elders, they say, I'm in, and I got my door locked by eight. What? That's not right. Some say, I'm in by seven, or I'm in by six. That door is locked, I stay in, I don't go out. That's not right. We've got to get rid of our, our stuff of uh, drugs here. Is, is that it? You mean I'm out of time? Oh, what the hell. Thank you. Thank you, folks. The cowbell rings for you, Joe. <laughs> Rumor has it that Daryl Sanders has arrived? Yes? Okay, then it's your turn. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to apologize first off. We had a hot water tank explode. And we thought we were talking about water all day. I'm not much of a public speaker. I was always told you should just imagine everybody in front of you naked. I promise I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I've lived in Penticton for 20 years. Uh, I see a lot of people that I know or have met or have done some work for in the past. We have a construction company here. Recently, we just leased a pub down the street. Uh, I've been a volunteer firefighter for a number of years, a, a water tender operator for the BC Wildfire Program. And we, Hopefully, you guys all think we did a good job this year. Um, I'm running for city council because there is bylaws and, and items that just seem to get overlooked or, or maladdressed. We've got a huge addiction problem in town here. We do have support to deal with some of those items. Uh, that also involves the uh, um, it involves the crime rate, which we should be able to have our RCMP make it nice and safe here. Sorry, is that better? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. I apologize if anybody didn't hear most of that. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so our crime rate is a huge thing that we need to deal with. Uh, everybody should feel safe to go out at night. And I know even uh, myself, when I go out at night, I, I make sure I live both ways and 
check behind me while I'm loading my vehicle. Um, I, I, I hope that I can get voted in this year and I can also be a watchdog for Penticton's so everybody can have a voice. Uh, I do believe that if, if there's a 60% vote for a no, that means no. Um, and, and again, yeah, I, I hope that uh, you guys will look to me to uh, help you in the future and uh, make a difference in City Hall. Thank you. So I think that's all of our council candidates. So time now to move on to the mayor candidates. And our first speaker will be Jico Loria. Uh, Hello, everybody. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there. My name is Yuka, and I am old. I'm almost retired. I could retire right now if I felt like it, but you know, I'm gonna feather my head for a few more years first before I do that. I was raised in Victoria, which is a you know, big retirement city, a very successful city, and that didn't happen by accident. They made a plan. They sat down in the city council in that city, and they made a plan, and they got all the people to go along with the plan, and they decided on what they were gonna do. A large retirement community in a city is a phenomenal thing because it stabilizes the city's income. Because you know how many of the people you got out there, you know how much they're going to spend every month because they're very, very consistent. So it provides a nice stable anchor for a city. But there's a certain maximum to it. Because if retired people, you know, if you had a whole entire city full of retired people and nothing else, they wouldn't survive because there wouldn't be anybody working at the gas station or the grocery store or anything like that. There are successful retirement communities. You got them in California, you got them down in uh, Florida, Canada, the country, Victoria, and Ottawa. And there's two things they all have in common. One, about a third of the revenue comes from tourism, which is very important in the retirement community. And the second thing is about only a third of the population is retired. That's because the retirement community needs a support network. So. Without a support network, you can't have a retirement community. And it roughly works out to, you need two people in productive capacity in order to support one retired person. And the numbers you gave me show me that that, that statistic's gonna go way out of whack, where there won't be enough people to support the retirement community. And I'm running out of time, wow. Okay, well my idea is, we've got two lakes, two beaches, you take one end of the city, you turn into the senior, seniors area, you take the other side of the end of the city, you turn into the youth end area, and be happy every day. Thanks. Our next speaker will be Andrew Jackerberg. Thank you. My wife and I have been together for 27 years, living here in Penticton. We raised two children. Uh, we have a grandson and a dog. I've been, uh, li been serving on council for 10 years. Uh, seniors certainly make our, our major focus of our official community update. And if the demographic, 65 plus demographic is going to grow from 29% to 38%, then we need to plan for that. Taxes and utilities are probably the biggest cost drivers that affect our daily lives. And yes, taxes are high, but it costs money to run a city and to provide the services. Our electrical rates are on par with Fortis, but we are doing an electrical uh, utility rate review. Taxes aren't building, people say you pay the highest taxes in the whole province, but yet when staff went into Civic Info PC and grabbed all the costs paid, general tax, parcel tax, city utilities, hospital, uh, those sorts of things, we're actually the second most in the valley. If you own uh, your home or have equity, you can actually defer your taxes. Fortis has an energy retrofit program for appliance upgrades. The city has an energy efficiency loan program, so you can actually uh, create more energy efficiency in your home and lower your monthly bills. Uh, the Robertson property, where we're standing here, we're actually reviewing how else we can enhance services inside and outside of the property. We updated our Parks and Rec master plan, 25 years old, really about creating more amenities to gather, get some exercise, and enjoy our beautiful surroundings. I want to see more of a walkable and cycling friendly community also with enhanced transit, which does mean a link to, to Kelowna. Uh, public safety and housing is uh, two things on my platform. In 17 years, I'll be 65, so planning for your future is actually planning for my future. I bring fair, balanced, and experienced leadership, and I want to part of that stability, consistency that carries on the momentum that we've been experiencing right now. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next is John Vasilaki. You know what? I feel very, very comfortable in this room. <laughs> My name is John Vasilaki. I'm a local businessman and a past counselor for 12 years. I have the experience and the vision of being a mayor of your city. I appreciate the focus for today's um, uh, session on retirees and seniors. Retirees have a wealth of knowledge and experience. They have a unique ability to act with empathy. They are willing to be mentors and they are committed to the well-being of future generations. Retirees are choosing to move to a beautiful community like Penticton. The 50 plus age group is steadily increasing and the OCP tells us that by 2046, seniors will represent 38% of our population. It is also important to understand the challenges. Currently, 50% of Penticton senior renters are spending more than 30% on housing. This means they have to make difficult decisions about nutrition, utilities, and social activities. This can lead to isolation and decline in health. As mayor, I will acknowledge the research and information gathered about senior populations as we plan the city's household growth. I will work with BC Housing and be creative with builds to ensure affordability. Seniors want and deserve to live a life of independence. I will support community resources like the drop-in center that provides affordable physical activities and social interactions. I will encourage programs like Better at Home and Meals on Wheels to foster independence without isolation. And my best paragraph is left out. <laughs> Thank you very much. But don't forget, there'll be a social part after so you can maybe hear that, that paragraph. Our next speaker will be James Blake. Hello, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I'm particularly excited to be here. Um, as some of you may know, I manage the movie theater, and I see many of you regularly, and I think our demographic is probably about 90% senior. Um, and I'm keenly aware of the challenges of the senior community because of that. Uh, my mother uh, recently passed away at 85, and I was keenly aware of the challenges she had. Um, and I would also like to say if I was mayor, the cookies would be free. <laughs> But we'll, we'll work on that next time. Um, so we have two minutes to solve many, many problems. Uh, and, and sometimes it does take longer than that to solve problems, but I'd like to throw a few things out there at you. Transportation. I see a lot of large buses with nobody on them. We need smaller buses, more frequent service, and we need proper bus shelters because it gets really cold. Um, housing affordability. We need to seriously think outside the box if we're going to solve this problem. We can't do anything that will artificially crash real estate prices. But if I go to buy a car, I can buy a car for zero down and I can get an extended loan. So I don't have to put money down and I have low payments so I can purchase that car. Why do we have to save $50,000 to buy a house when somebody makes $15 an hour? There's no way to do it. Um, and if we have a 50-year loan, it's at an affordable rate. Um, I'm running out of time, but I'd like to tell you guys a quick story. I was at the theater the other day, and, and a gentleman comes up, and he's like, well, yeah, you're, run you're running for mayor. What, what's your platform? Is it make Penticton great again? And he kind of caught me off guard, and I stopped and thought for a second. And I'm like, well, bring us into the 21st century. And he looks at me and laughs, and he's like, oh, people won't like that here. <laughs> That was very upsetting. I think you guys have a wealth of knowledge. Obviously, the world is in trouble. We need you. You're valuable. Uh, you need to engage. Thank you, Cal. Great. Great. And last, a 
sound bite. Great. Our next speaker will be Don at Wheeler. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me, as well as all of the other candidates here. Um, some of you may know me. I was a taxi driver here for four and a half years. I was dedicated wheelchair taxi for some time. Um, I believe accessibility <coughs> is a huge issue in the, in, in this city. Um, many, many places that I go, there's no possible way for many people, um, like Mr. Crocker there, to get around <coughs> in a store. Uh, and it's unfortunate we do not have any accessibility bylaws. This is something that I'm very keen on as my father had accessibility issues before he died. He uh, unfortunately died young at the age of 68 um, due to a number of issues, diabetes being one of them. Um, and I believe that we have a severe shortage in care in the area. Um, we have a lot of people being trained and a lot of people leaving to go work elsewhere where the wages are better. I think this is something that can be addressed by seniors and young people alike by offering, I don't know, that's a hard one, <laughs> offering, uh, offering knowledge from the seniors would be a good thing. Because as has been stated many times before by many of the candidates, you guys have so much knowledge that has yet to be passed on to many of us. And some of it may never be passed on, which is very, very unfortunate. I would like to see a place and a time where the seniors can pass on their knowledge to people like me who, you know, I'm standing up here running for mayor because of issues that I've seen. I uh, just am unsure how to go about changing those things without your help. Please vote on October 20th. And our last mayoral candidate, Jason Cox. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming and spending the time to engage on the issues of the city in this important election. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a father of four teenage daughters. I own a business in town. Prior to owning that, I was a commercial banker as a career. Um, you may have seen uh, our business featured on CBC Dragon's Den, Dragon's Den a couple of years ago. So we've been able to build a successful business in the community. But that, um, while I may be known as, as a business leader in the community, um, it's not all I am. And for the past uh, 15 years that I've lived in the community, I've rolled up my sleeves and gone to work and uh, volunteered for a number of, of agencies in the, in the city. Um, been the president of the Chamber of Commerce three times been on the board of the Brain Injury Society, which administers a good deal of the affordable housing in the community. And through that experience, that varied experience, um, I've, I've come to learn a lot about the solutions that we need moving forward in this community. And that's why I'm running for mayor. Um, I have not been on council before, but I also know that sometimes the words, this is how we've always done it, are what hold us back too often. And sometimes you need someone to come in with enough experience in the community to know what the problems are and what the solutions are but not so much um, entrenchment that you um, don't hear new ideas and just keep doing things the same way they've always been done. So that's why I'm here. I started this campaign a year ago uh, by hosting town halls in my own business and going out and meeting with the public. And uh, in fact, I've, I've been told I'm the only candidate who's actually made a tour through all of the senior living facilities in the community. Gone out and talked to the people engaged to get to the point where I felt confident enough to put my, my name on the ballot and present myself to you as a person with solutions. Um, I don't look at seniors' issues as a, as a blanket. I think that, that the, um, the best way to understand any issue is to see it from, from the point of view of the people who are living it. And that's, uh, that's why I've dedicated myself to the community, and that's what I'll continue to do as your mayor. I hope to earn your support on October 20th. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jason, and thanks to all the candidates. Now is the time to applaud. <laughs> now, we've come to the midway point, and we're doing amazingly well. It's only quarter to three. It's only quarter to 11. No, it's only quarter to three. 
I suggest everybody stand up, take a stretch, don't leave. The doors are These are questions from you, and here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we'll ask six questions of our counselor candidates, and we're going to pick four names at random, and those four will answer question number one. Then we'll pick four more names to take a crack at question number two, and so on. The mayors, uh, which we'll start with, will all tackle one question, and the question will be, as a leader of our municipal government, how would you deal with the challenge of running a city that will have 40% of its population 50 or older? One minute to respond to this question, and that will be the case for everybody. One minute answer from each of the mayoral candidates. How would you, as leader of the city, tackle the issues, run a city with such a a large seniors population. And we'll go in the reverse order uh, uh, that we did before. So Jason Cox, you get to speak first. Thanks for the question. And, um, and thank you for all of you who stayed. Um, the, the reality is that we are a community that people continue to move to to retire. And so the, the silver tsunami that they've been identified for years, um, I've been aware of and, and we've been talk about how we, how we govern a, a city with those realities going forward. Um, it means having increased accessibility um, uh, for people with mobility issues and for people um, to, feel, to feel safe um, traveling our, on our sidewalks and, and into our buildings. So uh, one of those issues includes uh, better snow removal, which means the city needs to spend more in its budget on making things accessible, including snow removal. Uh, we also need to um, provide more opportunity for recreation, and again, safe recreation in our parks, um, and also in centers like this, and really build and, and enhance the, um, the, the opportunities here. And finally, um, support the seniors community with, with the employees and the infrastructure and the, um, the economy of, of a retirement city. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jason. And now, Dominic Wheeler, would you tackle that question? <laughs> Accessibility is something foremost in my uh, thoughts quite often. Um, safety and security is huge as well, and many of these candidates are going to touch on that. I believe also that we're going to need at least one dedicated staffer to get out and speak with all of you to find out what it is that you as individuals need on top of the group effort. This is something that any leader needs to do is they need to make sure that they are that the people that they are leading are taking an interest in the society as a whole and every single one of you has viewpoints uh, some agree with each other some don't and that's okay because we just have to come down to the ones that matter for everybody and then look at the individuals so that we can also find the Need a middle ground for those as well. Thank you. James Blake, as leader, how would you cope with seniors' issues? We need a government that sincerely values your opinion and goes out of its way to listen to you and hear you. Uh, and also, all of the infrastructure, transportation, and all of these things. Uh, I think as a community, if we come together, we can lobby to go ahead and make it so a minimum wage goes up, your pension goes up, so you have a survivable amount of money, um, and, uh, and just make it so it's a fantastic place where everybody participates and is involved. Next is John Vasilaki. Thank you, and that's an excellent question concerning seniors. My first priority would be safety 
We know what's happening in our community, especially in the downtown core and up in the industrial area. But I think another important issue that the city has to face is that we've got to invest in, in the in the volunteer center. Uh, as you know, seniors, a lot of them cannot drive. Uh, they can't go to the locations they want to go. They cannot go to their um, the doctor's appointment, so we've got to have the volunteers in place that can transport these people um, to their destinations if we can't uh, get BC Transit to put more lines or more routes in place. Um, and we've got to go out and uh, recruit more professionals for all the senior housing that's coming in play in, a, in the near future. And, uh, further on um, in time, and they are high-paying jobs which we require here. Thank you. Andrew Jackerberg. Well, I think our community actually has been starting to, the city has been starting to go out of their way to engage with people on our engagement. Uh, Shape your city, Penticton, uh, our official community plan I touched on earlier. We've actually had over 3,000 in-person conversations so we are starting now to get more of a, a pulse and, and involve the community to participate in the decisions that are going to change our community. I think uh, continuing to fund a lot of the many nonprofits that are out providing the services uh, to seniors are important. Obviously, public safety and housing are probably the, the, the key pillars. Um, there is an accessibility study, and we've implemented some things as we change over things downtown or, or redo some of our infrastructure. That needs to continue. And I think. Uh, we don't talk much about our festivals and events. Uh, it certainly is a way of drawing people in our community, but it also gives uh, many seniors who are part of our volunteer army opportunities to get out and be engaged and socialize and be part of something bigger. Thank you. And Duke Lario, last to speak. Hello, everybody, again. The seniors just seem like they're going to move here anyway, so we're going to increase the number of seniors. My concern is the reduction in quality of life and services will be available. Because unless you bring in double the number of people that are working, there will be a reduction in your quality of life and the services that are available. That's just an economic fact. You've got 15,000 seniors, 10,000 cars. If you've only got one gas station, you're all waiting two weeks in a lineup to fill your gas can. You need people, you need double the number of people. Youth people, the young people that are here working, they're providing you with the goods and the services that you need so you can stay retired. So if you can increase the population of retired people, then we're going to have to dramatically figure out some way to get the young people in here to work at the gas stations. And you need somebody in that fast food restaurant going, would you like fries with that? Unless you want to do it yourself. So the only way you're going to survive and have a good quality of life is to figure out some way to help the economic prosperity of the city and bring a lot of workers here to give you a support network. Okay, thanks to all our mayoral candidates for, for answering that question. I'm going to ask Elmi if she's spelled four names of uh, council candidates to tackle the first of uh, six questions that we will put to them. We have no idea who this is going to be, but we'll pick four, and then we'll pick another four for the next question. The first question, I'll read while Elmi's putting the names, there are 109 seniors on the BC housing wait list for subsidized housing in Penticton. What do you think city council can do to help increase the supply of affordable housing for seniors in Penticton? So the first name was Glenn Clark. Hundred and nine people are looking for a place. I can remember when I moved here in 1991, I couldn't get a place. I lived in Coleman for four months and went back and forth. So I, I know the frustrations, and there's a lot of, you hear right now, story after story of people that are on the streets and they're, they're seniors. So what can the city do? It's a good question, but maybe we have to invest in ourselves and build on one of our properties a place where seniors who are in a mix like that can find a place. It's a, it's a tough question. It's a tough reality, and I think that working with you know, the city to uh, help alleviate that would be the only way because can we depend on our federal and provincial government to help our seniors in this town? I don't really think so. So I'd be stepping up as far as I can to uh, help support the seniors in this community get replaced into a place that's uh, not only livable, but 
some place to look out a lot of respect. Thank you. Thank you. I think this is probably one of the most critical questions we can ask ourselves as a community is how do we provide for that? I know uh, 25 years ago I petitioned the Royal Commission on Health regarding bed blockers. The exact same problem only in the hospital situation. Now we're looking at residential situations. I do think the city could take a key role not only in lobbying other uh, levels of government but also looking to places like we did in the past with uh, some of our service clubs. I remember we put in low-income housing on Pickering Street many years ago. And although the service clubs have kind of dwindled a little bit, I think through Habitat uh, for Humanity and a lot of other areas that we have to reach out to, I think if we form some really strong partnerships with other uh, elements that we can go a long way to providing that care. Thank you. Frank, we're here. It's Rieger. <laughs> He's changed it. He changed it again. Thank you. Um, there's actually a lot of initiatives going on in Penticton right now with various types of housing units, but specifically on affordable. There's two units uh, being worked on right now in uh, uh, the Nanaimo and Brunswick behind the courthouse, or the tax office, I mean. That, that's got uh, units of affordable housing, and one of the hotel units is, is also adding in some affordable housing. So there are initiatives, but the, the city also held a, uh, uh, a, a conference this past March involving all levels of government and federal government, provincial government, they're all talking that they have funding towards a variety of housing needs. And I think it's a matter of the city trying to keep working with the various uh, uh, senior governments to encourage that, to support the uh, the uh, proper zoning and, uh, and and work with the governments to uh, have the grants and the come towards Van Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, I cre or helped create a affordable housing committee, and I've, I've done a lot of affordable housing forums. I've, I've gone to them. I've, I've heard the research. BC Housing is something that we can definitely call. I know that the percentages are high for the seniors looking for uh, housing, and they, along with other programs, are funding for the next 10 years trying to help create more housing for the seniors and well not only the seniors but that is a higher rate but um, you know for myself I, I believe that we can definitely figure out a solution for this by you know densifying and create we don't need big houses we don't need large properties we need to densify a bit more uh, to create an easier access for everyone thank you Okay, we're going to move to question two now, uh, which is, I have to admit, it's still a question under development. We did hear a lot about transportation uh, from a lot of the candidates, and this is a transportation question. And it sounds something like this. My transit question could be a show and tell using the city rider's guide. In holding up the guide, showing the map, an overlay of all the bus routes, would they know how to advise a senior how to get from their home to their doctor's office. Uh, we, we have a map. We have, actually have that map. Okay. But, so to, to maybe refine the question, the problem is, is the transportation system as it is friendly enough and understandable enough that a senior who needs to get from home to a doctor would understand? Could you explain that, that route to them? Are you familiar enough? And what would you do to make it user friendly? Yes? Yes. Okay. John Vassalot. Don't ask that. me to repeat the question because I, I have no <laughs> idea. No, go ahead. Um, I, I was aware of such a, such a map, and I personally don't understand it myself. 
Um, I've looked at it many times, but I think we need more signage and we need more education and we need more information to go to all the residences of Penticton, not, not only the seniors, but any age group, so that they know if uh, they don't want to drive their, their car downtown, where they can go and pick up uh, the bus. Um, I mean, to, to get a tax, it's easy. You just phone them, they'll come and they take you. But a lot of seniors can't afford to pay um, a taxi uh, to go to any of their um, doctor's appointments or any of the other stuff. So it's education that we have to push forward. Thank you. Marie Pryor. So the question is on uh, transportation, getting people around to the, see their doctors and getting to the hospitals and generally just getting around. What I have noticed in the area that I live in, which is in um, two towers on Atkinson Street, um, there's a conglomeration of elderly people in that location who are able to walk, if they are able to walk, to the local um, services. So they can visit doctors if they're available in that area. There also needs to be a collective um, volunteer group that could have um, small vans and uh, groups of them to take registered people who need um, calls to go to the doctor or the hospital and uh, be able to su be supported in that area. We have lots of people who retired uh, drivers still driving still have time that would be willing to offer that. Get together as an organization and provide that service. Julius Bloomfield. Well, transportation, I think, is part of the, it's part of the bigger picture. And I think uh, that uh, the city could be acting as advocates for seniors uh, in an overall position, and, and I want to take you, tell you about my dad um, in Britain. I went; he was 80 a few years ago, and, uh, and he needed some help, so I went over to help him out. And I found that there was a charity over in Britain called Age Concern that would phone him every day to see how he was doing because he lived on his own. So I tracked down the charity offices, and they were in the uh, city hall. And uh, I found that it was a government-funded charity that uh, was organized by the, each city that was, they were advocates for the seniors and made sure that they got all the services that they needed. And I thought that's a hell of a step in the right direction. And I'd like to see a pilot project like that in this city. Thank you. Uh, the bus route. My brother Murray could probably tell me way better than I can. He reads the pamphlet, knows exactly where to go. Uh, but uh, I think there should be an organization in Ticton called uh, Seniors Helping Seniors. Because some of us are 55, some of us are 89. So, I, I, uh, so some of us can drive, some can't. So I think uh, that, that uh, helping each other would be a, a really good way. We, we're probably the best, the best volunteer uh, city in all of Western Canada. So I think we could put that together pretty fast. Um, also, on the bus routes, uh, I, I think they should be redesigned, totally redesigned. Um, my thoughts on that are to have one bus going up and down Main Street continually, and the other buses uh, continually going back and forth so you can interchange up the Main Street. Uh, you should be able to get to where you're going a lot faster, and I think it would work really well. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pick four more names, and here's another question about services for seniors. Better at Home is a nonprofit program supported by the United Way. It's delivered in a partnership between One Sky Community Resources and the Seniors Wellness Society. They provide services to seniors who need help with things like transportation and household tasks. And apparently, there's a very long wait list for services. One of the services is snow shoveling, and they say they have a very limited capacity to meet that need. Would you support the city being involved? in exploring strategies to increase the ability to meet community needs, like snow shoveling. 
when like Calgary there's a foot of snow on the ground all of a sudden. Uh, absolutely, I would definitely can, uh, be willing to engage in that conversation. Uh, I'm affected by the snow a lot. I do not own a car or a vehicle. I walk or bike everywhere where I go. Um, and it is difficult for me sometimes because this, the city does not plow for bikers in the winter time. And they really don't, I, I, it, I've seen the different routes that they their priorities are, and I would like to see more of that. We focus on the alternative. We're not to move towards away from cars to allow for more snow plowing and more snow shoveling that would get people who are going by foot, going by bike, to be able to access the city. Or even to, I've seen a lot of people, they put themselves in danger when you're on the, the motorized scooters going on the road and you know, just being in traffic, and that's something, yes, I would like to encourage that. So in the winter time, it is safer to be on the streets and on the sidewalks here in the city. Thank you. Daryl Sanders. Mm -hmm. So for the last uh, number of years living in Penticton, we have a lot of seniors that live on our street and around the area. And I do own a construction company, so we have a snow plow and we have ATVs with snow blades. And we, we've been known as snow angels in town because every year we walk up and down the streets, clear the sidewalks where the city hasn't been. And I strongly do support uh, a program where the city could invest in having uh, maybe some crews that go out and do a little bit better in the residential areas and around the, the centers and, and up and down our sidewalks. Uh, I moved here from Manitoba 20 years ago, and I'll tell you that the snow there is not quite not what it is here. It's quite deeper. And uh, we do have to uh, take care of these maintenance issues. And I mean, even after the snow clearing, come springtime, we need to do a better job of cleaning the bike lanes and cleaning up the sidewalks and making sure they are accessible. Thank you. James Blake. Um, I think there's a need to redo a lot of our sidewalks in general. If somebody's in a wheelchair or has trouble walking, they're very uneven. Um, and we do need to stretch ourselves and maybe think about being in the 21st century and look for possible alternatives. I hear there are actually tiles that absorb ultraviolet light so they retain heat longer so the snow will melt quicker. Um, I think we need to think outside of the box and do whatever we can to support each other and move ourselves forward. Thank you. Joe Frothen. It should be. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I've got a big issue with our sidewalks. We should be able to get a volunteer group together or whatever because I'm in a wheelchair. And yet, I find to help people out one way or another. But our streets are notorious. Um, man, I've been stuck out in the streets for two and a half hours that I couldn't get through an intersection. Every, you know, there was too much snow or too much ice. And you want to talk about challenge? That's a challenge, believe me. So we, we need to have more of this done. I'm not sure we can come up with a way uh, to in the city to turn around and resolve the problem. All it is is just your minds getting together and talking some common sense and watching it all. It's plain and simple. Okay, so here's our next question. The provincial government recognizes the important role seniors play in our society. So much so that the first week in June is dedicated as BC Seniors Week. Around the province, communities host events to honor and celebrate seniors. But, the questioner says, not in Penticton. Not one event for seniors. Not a mention on the city's website. Why is that? If the city does really value and recognize the important role of seniors in the community, how will that be demonstrated? Kimberly. As a senior, you have to answer a question. 
Yeah, a uh, few years back, uh, when I was on council the first time, uh, Councilor Gr Grimaldi initiated a program in the uh, convention center where it was a seniors weekend there, and I don't know what's happened to that since, but it was very well attended and, and well constructed, and it created a lot of interest for people like yourselves to go there and see what was available for seniors in the communities. The, what, the one thing I, I hear all the time with, with announcing these things is, is, and I will offer a word of caution on this, and I would, I've experienced this as a mayor. The more you take responsibility in the municipality, the more the government will give to you, the higher levels the government will give to you. And there's several programs that have been taken away from us and downloaded onto the municipality. What that means is we've got no other means of income coming into the city other than to tax. So. Uh, as much as we promote and look after everything we need to look after as a municipality, you have to be cautious as a municipality not to take on other responsibilities about the levels of government. Thank you. Karen Crowley. Um, thank you. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with having one week to celebrate seniors. We should be celebrating our seniors every day. It is you people who have made our city the way it is and how well it's run uh, to date. And we should be thanking you and celebrating you for that. We do have pioneer tea uh, that in here in this building. And when I volunteered for the last one, it was nice to see the seniors come out that we could honor you and celebrate and give back to you what we've done. Um, in some of the other questions, um, I just think that seniors should be honored and respected and given all sorts of benefits, even in the way of free bus rides. Uh, I think that that would be our way of giving back year round versus one week of celebrating, woo, and then put you back in the closet. <laughs> Thank you. David O'Brien. Thank you. I pretty much agree with what Jake said. A lot of responsibilities have been pushed down from the provincial government down to the municipal government. We have to be conscious of that. At the same time, we have a large majority of seniors. I think we've got a great community here that can support you. We need to turn that volume up. We could use a, a senior information booth. Not all of you use a smartphone. And it's difficult for you to access information. <coughs> I think the idea of a free bus running up and down Main Street is wonderful. I think improved. Transit to get you to that main street is, is a great idea. I think as a new community, we need to get our, our youth engaged with you. I don't see many people here under 25, under 20. Let's get them involved. Let's find some groups that can meet with you and help our seniors. Thank you. Yeah, Gloria. <coughs> For the past many years, the city of Kentucky has really gone out of its way to get rid of festivals. They got rid of Iron Man, they drove Boomstock and bought bankruptcy. There's only, you know, three days of Pete's Fest left. They don't wake Fest tried to they didn't want them. They don't want festivals. They've been going every way not to have them. I'm at the opposite viewpoint. The only way the city is going to survive is by having festivals of all kinds and getting people from outside of the city to come here and spend lots and lots of money. The a week long festival for seniors would be an excellent idea. Why not Peach Fest for seniors? I, I do you know, a week-long thing with you know, for, uh, the events, uh, informational seminars. I think it'd be a great event to have in Penticton. We've got seniors here. It would bring seniors in from all around the province. We could actually be like a landmark place for a seniors festival. We could have the biggest one in the province. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I think we should move forward with it, along with other festivals that we need to have. That's good enough. I have the next question. Yeah. What steps would you take to preserve and enhance ecosystem and viability alongside providing infrastructure necessary for a healthy, sustainable human community? So let me say that again. What steps would you take to preserve and enhance ecosystem viability along with providing the infrastructure necessary for a healthy, sustainable human community? I think the answer, as it can be attributed to many of the questions today, 
Yeah, to bring people together in that conversation. Uh, the, you need to have a catalyst to uh, have a brainstorming session, to bring forward what other people see, what other people feel is the need. I think by going forward, you need to work together. If we're individuals, uh, not a lot can be accomplished, whether it's the city or uh, even a service group. But I think we need to pool our resources together, talk to each other, think about resolutions, because sustainability is certainly uh, the outcome that is needed. Thank you. Kevin Parcho. Okay, this is a great question, and it's uh, part of my platform. So one part of the watchdog, and then uh, one part of the vote is our beautiful natural way of life here. Uh, so what we could do is go off of that, our natural Okanagan. Uh, what we need to do is address the uh, dangers that are uh, in our community right now with the overuse of pesticides and herbicides like glyphosate. And uh, all we see right now are wineries out there. We don't have any biodiversity, so we need to get some biodiversity going. Uh, create some food forests throughout our community. Uh, practicing farms with free range organic certification and start a natural uh, uh, Okanagan approved. Uh, create, food, like I said, with the food forest. Uh, organic produce distributed to food banks, meals, uh, meal houses, and care homes, etc. Build greenhouses to provide wholesome food all year round, fresh produce that is affordable for everyone. So we start off our own uh, organic co op here. Lynn Kelsey. <laughs> My partner was wanting this, but I was going to give it to her. Um, I'm Lynn Kelsey. Okay. It, a stable, uh, attainable energy, alternate energy. Those kinds of things to make um, Penticton, I'm really not doing well with this one, to make Penticton more vibrant. Um, how many really like the electrical bills that they get? They've really gone up. Let's use things to make things more sustainable so that we can bring your, your electrical bill down, whether that be solar power or wind power. Uh, our city can also be recapturing methane gas from their sewer treatment and very easily. So we want to be doing that. We have to maintain infrastructure in the city because I think you do like the roads. So we've got to maintain, maintain those. But we've got to make it a green space. Um, we're asking now, I'm the vice chair of the OCP plan, uh, the official community plan task force. And we are looking at making it more people friendly. Thank so, you. Thanks, Almy. Well, it seems like we are meeting the punch with uh, solar and wind power. Um, I'm actually looking at the Zero Plus model. I've been in contact with Okanagan Solar, where we can, as a city, put some of the buildings into a, a situation where rather than paying for our electricity, we are instead being paid for our electricity, which will help the city's, the, the, the city's pocketbook, if you will, in order to help put some of these things together for seniors. Maybe these are things that can help to fund um, festivals, as has been covered by other things. Uh, wind power is another great one. They have a model now which will cause zero vulnerability to birds and increase the power um, created by approximately tenfold. I think these are great things to look at, and I certainly hope to have the chance to do so. This is, of course, about recreation. The Penticton Seniors Drop-In Center and the Seniors Wellness Society both strive to support healthy, active aging by providing opportunities for physical activity, recreational pursuits, mental stimulation, and social connection. But they're nonprofits, and they struggle to keep their prices affordable, and they're limited in expanding programs to meet growing demands because of funding challenges. If you were elected, how would you commit to ensuring these facilities and services are maintained, supported, and expanded? Andrew Jack, wait. 
Yes, yeah, so we don't have the chance to think about it. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the questions before, um, one of the things I wrote down, we need a champion. And sometimes when, when some of the nonprofits don't uh, come up with a solid, I don't want to use the word business plan, but a solid plan to sort of say, this is what we need and why we need it to come in front of council uh, to get, uh, and we, it's oversubscribed. We, we deal with over $600,000 in community grants, um, and the need, of course, is a lot higher than that. So sometimes uh, not having a, a detailed plan on, on how and who we're, we're helping has is, is been an inhibitor. Um, certainly, we are looking at how we can enhance this property here, um, both inside the building and also around, whether it's pickleball, whether it's some other amenity or sports, to uh, help create that healthy, active lifestyle. So. Uh, very supportive of having a healthy, active community, and I would do my best to lobby and support that. Campbell Roy. Thank you. Um, I think that the way to approach this is through uh, partnerships. Uh, I think that we need to uh, evaluate any option or opportunity that we have for granting through provincial and federal uh, partners, um, but we also need to look at community partnerships. Again, I, I know through the city that we can budget, but we can't continuously budget for uh, every activity. Uh, I, I would say again, I, I fought for the pickleball courts. Um, I hope to see many more of these opportunities arise, and I would look at every different type of funding model we can find. It, it's not as it's not as simple as saying recreation, because with that recreation comes the support that we all need through friendships and and, and knowing each other. We, we don't want to be alone, and these things bring us together more than just for the recreational part. So the fun bottle, we can find ways to do that. I, I can't wait to help try and do that, uh, but it's more than just recreation. John Archer. I think one of the most important things that we could do to uh, ensure the, um, I'm going to need a repeat question. Okay. The Seniors Wellness Center Society and the Drop-In Center have their limitations. They need funding. They can't always expand the programs that they offer because of funding problems. So if you were elected, would you commit to ensuring these facilities and services are maintained and supported and even expanded so they can meet the need? I would certainly like to consult with all the people and the different groups and societies and nonprofits within the city that do require this funding from the city, and also to have a close partnership agreement uh, with the city and uh, elected representatives from these various groups to meet with the city on an ongoing basis, basis to ensure that the needs are met of those various societies and that uh, there could be creative solutions for, more, uh, for better funding for these groups. Thank you. Tommy Solver. This was actually part of what was on my the platform that was going up on my website. Sorry. What I would really like to see is a model that I saw in the States about 20 years ago. The local, that town had it set up that their community centers and their recreation centers had a flat, really subsidized, low fee for families and individuals. So for a family, this was in Utah, they really have big families, $200 a year. So if we looked at a model like that for our community, we have a fantastic recreation center. We need the, not only the activity and the social aspect, but we also need it to alleviate boredom, loneliness. It also applies to the youth. We have a lot of problems with addiction, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, but there's nothing to do that doesn't cost you money to go out every time you go out. So this is one of the initiatives I would like to see is this is the social aspect for our community. Thank you. One more question. Okay. Uh, all up and down the valley, there is a need to recruit doctors. We're always reading, I just read the paper recently about Osuya is thinking about uh, building a, a, a walk in medical center. Apparently, there is a need for a geriatric specialist in Penticton. Any suggestions you have on how to recruit and retain the medical professionals? that seniors especially will need increasingly. Jason Cox. Uh, 
Thank you. I'm very grateful for this question. This is something that we've worked on uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development uh, team over a number of years ago, where we, there was an active um, effort to attract and retain physicians to the community. Um, it hasn't been uh, a focus in, in the last um, the last municipal government, the last local government, and I think we need to return to that focus and see this as, as an integral part of our community. Um, there are uh, a need for doctors for, for families and for seniors. Uh, if you ask around, anyone new to the community is actively looking for a doctor, and a doctor is, um, is fundamental for, for, obviously, for our health, but um, having that regular check-in and that ability to, uh, to know where you stand um, with your health allows you to get out and do all the other, the other things that you're doing. So, um, in, in short, a, a return to a, a city-driven um, economic development recruitment of doctors to our area. Jessica Mark. I also am aware of this problem. Uh, I grew up in a small town um, called McCusk, BC, and they have terrible time tracking any sort of medical help. Uh, the, the main doctor in town is the same guy that was my doctor when I was a, a small kid. And what they've done is they've offered incentives such as housing incentives, uh, and they've also worked really hard to try to make it a community that's welcoming of young professionals too. So I understand the community is the one thing that keeps people here. So if we can create a community that's going to make it so that somebody who moves here from someone else brings all of their knowledge and their professional ability actually wants to stay here and offer some incentives for them to stay along the way, uh, then they're going to want to stay. Like, make this a place that people want to actually live. Uh, I, used, I taught at the Penticton Indian Band for the last seven years, grade seven and eight, and they had a way different um, way of treating the elderly people in the community there. They didn't refer to them as seniors, they were elders, knowledge keepers. And they always got fed first whenever there was food. I think we need to feed our seniors first too. Daryl Clark. Can I hold the bell for a minute? <laughs> I think we've headed down the road that will help. We've built a new a new patient tower, and that's going to be a first step because we're going to have new technology here that the doctors are going to want to use. We don't want to stop petitioning the government. We want to keep that role going. We want to make Penticton a central hub where these doctors want to come and practice. The other thing we need to do is we need to continue building a community where people want to live. We want to make this the envy of not the province, but the country, and possibly North America and the world. We have an opportunity right now for OCP to set the direction, and I'm going to keep beating that same drum that we have an opportunity to go forward and make this a place where not just seniors want to live, but we all want to live and we all can live. And we won't just get the doctors for the seniors, we'll get the specialists we need for the kids. We'll get the obstetricians, we'll get all of the doctors that we need to build our community, not just one segment of it. So what we need to do is we need to keep marketing and improving Penticton so people want to live here and have no hard time attracting, because in industry, it's been the same thing. All right, so we've now, everybody's had a chance to answer a question. Okay, so we're, the very last thing on our program is some short snappers. These are yes, no questions that everybody gets to raise their hand if it's yes. If you don't raise your hand, it's no. Okay. Yeah, so if, if you're answered, if you're a council, everybody can see the, the mayoral candidates up on the stage. But if you're uh, a council uh, candidate, can you stand if your answer is yes? Now, apparently there were a ton of questions around regarding Skaha Lake Park. So we'll ask this question. Do you support the preservation of parks? <laughs> Okay, next question. At one time, the city of Penticton had a seniors advisory committee. That has disappeared. Stand or raise your hand if you would support the immediate formation of a city-sponsored committee to examine and address seniors' matters. Next question. 
Raise your hand if you hate seniors. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> that, that is a completely wrong question. We're, we're, we're not going to have it. Okay. Uh, seniors represent a large portion of the Pentecostal community. So the question is, it makes sense that we become an age-friendly community. Would you support the city's application for funding to begin the process of becoming an age-friendly community? So nice. Next question. And that's it. That's it. And it's quarter to four. And it's quarter to four. Thank you, Bob. God bless you. Great, Kevin Proto here, local supporting locals, and we just wrapped up at the uh, Seniors Drop-In Center, and I gotta tell you, <laughs> what a lot more relaxing of, uh, of uh, all candidates for him than it was at the, uh, the lakeside there, we're having uh, the press uh, come at you, uh, great letter in the Protected Western today, uh, that you should read, Bizarre Forum, I think it's called there, but uh, yeah, I thought it was really positive, and uh, you know, Scott Hall Park came up, but uh, it wasn't the main focus, but you can tell that people would still have better feelings over it. And so subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kevin Proto, and uh, like us on uh, Facebook, it's uh, Kevin Proto, it's time to drain City Hall. Um, and uh, yeah, follow us for the rest of the, uh, the elections, and we'll always have to put the videos up as soon as possible. Thank you.